Adrian College Media Production House provides opportunities for students to learn and grow live on the airwaves, just like Matt Kibbe. I've gotten a chance to create a relationship with coaches and teams and learn more from people instead of trying to teach myself something. I've gotten an opportunity to expand my knowledge of sports, hone in on my skills as a broadcaster, and learn about equipment in different ways. You get, a, you get more of a connection with professors as well. Providing opportunities, growing leadership. The Adrian College Media Production House. Thanks for tuning in. Adrian College is looking for leaders, student athletes with the tenacity to keep the Bulldogs at the top, the forefront, in and out of the classroom. The Bulldogs are looking for talent, character, hard work, grit, leaders who can electrify sold out crowds, got out a last line shift, will their team to victory, hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth and be a part of a legend in the making. Think you have what it takes to become a Bulldog? Visit adrian.edu to learn more. fans connect with Adrian College TV on social media to be updated when we're broadcasting live, to see highlights, plays of the week, and much more. Adrian College Television is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. ACTV's handle is at Adrian College TV on every form of social media. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing to the home of the Bulldogs, Adrian College TV. Adrian College is a pinpoint like no other. With our 77 undergraduate degrees, 47 majors, and 21 broad fields of study, Adrian has a one-of-a-kind, hands-on learning experience for everyone. Do you want to visit the campus of Adrian College in person? Visit adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Again, that's adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Come take in the beautiful facilities at Adrian College for yourself. If there was one word I was going to use to describe the communication arts program at Adrian College, it would be unique. Students find themselves on the radio, in front of and behind the camera, and directing their own programs. Students learn in a personalized environment that sets them up for a world of opportunities. Are you ready for your moment in the limelight? Learn more about the Rush Communications Center and Adrian College's communications program by visiting adrian.edu today. I'm Matt Kibbe, the current student body president here at Adrian College. I chose AC because the campus simply feels like home. Everywhere I go, I know the amenities are there to help me succeed and get to the next level in my career. If you want to see what Adrian College has to offer, you can schedule an in-person visit at adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Adrian College has dozens of athletics programs and winning is a staple on our campus. We have the culture of winning in and out of the classroom. This is a place where young men and women grow into professionals for life. Are you interested in learning more about the Bulldog experience? Visit adrianbulldogs.com and the Recruit Me tab to be recruited to play your sport of choice today. If you have what it takes, you could be a Bulldog in no time. Adrian College Television would like to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Carlton Lodge of Adrian. Carlton Lodge is sponsoring all ACTV broadcasts during the 2021 to 2022 school year. Located at 1629 West Maumee and Adrian, Carlton Lodge offers comfortable rooms and suites at affordable rates. There's also a heated indoor and outdoor pool along with a 24-hour fitness center. Thank you for the continued support toward Adrian College Television. Adrian College is looking for leaders, student athletes with the tenacity to keep the Bulldogs at the top, the forefront, in and out of the classroom. The Bulldogs are looking for talent, character, hard work, grit, 
Leaders who can electrify sold-out crowds, got out a last-line shift, will their team to victory, hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth, and be a part of a legend in the making. Think you have what it takes to become a Bulldog? Visit adrian.edu to learn more. Adrian College has once again been recognized for its commitment to engaged, experiential education by Colleges of Distinction, a one-of-a-kind guide for college-bound students. While higher education has changed over the past 20 years, Colleges of Distinction's selection process has stayed consistent 
and accepting only those that adhere to the four distinctions, engage students, great teaching, vibrant community, and successful outcomes. Overlaid in the last few years have been a look into high impact practices. They believe most critical to the student experience were the kinds of engaging experience that are found at Adrian College. To learn more, please visit adrian.edu. April 6, 2021, I was sitting in my office and an email popped into my inbox from someone in your graduating class today. The email said, Dear President Docky, back in August I had emailed you in regards to the state of the well-being of the campus community during the COVID spike. At that time, I was incredibly anxious about the prospect of spending my senior year of college sitting at my kitchen table in my hometown trying to finish my seminar projects in the event we switched to all online learning. As I type this email now in April, I can... We are live inside Arrington Ice Arena for game number one of the NCHA quarterfinal playoff series between the Concordia University of Wisconsin Falcons and your Adrian College Bulldogs. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Herman, joined alongside by Brett Carlisle, and we are so happy to have you here tonight. Now for those of you unfamiliar, last weekend was the final regular season weekend for the Bulldogs, and they played two games over against St. Norbert College. The first they won six to one, in which they clinched the regular season NCHA conference championship. So another banner to be added at the end of this season here at the AIA. So huge congratulations out to the Bulldogs. And this weekend, they're facing off against Concordia University of Wisconsin, which they did play a couple of weeks ago, Friday, January 27th, which they won eight to two. And January 28th, the following evening, which they won 12 to one. Brent, we got a lot of good players on, on the ice. You got any in particular that we're looking at tonight? And how come we just need to just talk about how what an incredible year Matu Spaniak is having, leading points, leading goals, second in assists in the NCHA. What an incredible season. Congratulations to him. He's got 22 goals on the season and 44 points overall to lead both his team and the NCHA. And I mean, Nick Weaven on that Concordia University, Wisconsin side. But I also like to give a little shout out to Gabe Rosick as well. I mean, he's been an outstanding goalie this year for Concordia University, Wisconsin. The record may not show it, but he's actually had a lot of saves this year. So congratulations to Gabe Rosick on a great year as a freshman, nonetheless, coming into the NCHA in a tough conference. Yeah, and you said it, Brett. 20 games played, 16 games started a 416 GAA and a 911 save percentage. He's been the workhorse in the blue paint for the Falcons doing everything that he can to keep all games as close as possible. And he had a great weekend the last time we saw him. So he gets the nod tonight and we'll see how things go. And we are introducing the starting lineups now for the Bulldogs as they take to the ice and to the blue. On the forward line tonight, it's going to be Ty Enns, followed by Sam Ruffin and Zach Heinz. On the back end, Jaden Shields and Chase Spencer. And the senior in between the pipes tonight, Nick Tallarico. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere here on ACTV. It's NCAA, NCHA quarterfinal matchup number one. Back in a few. Our fitness center. Center. Thank you for the continued support toward Adrian College Television. Adrian College is looking for leaders, student athletes with the tenacity to keep the Bulldogs at the top, the forefront, in and out of the classroom. The Bulldogs are looking for talent, character, hard work, grit, leaders who can electrify sold out crowds, got out a last line shift, 
will their team to victory, hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth, and be a part of a legend in the making. Think you have what it takes to become a Bulldog? Visit adrian.edu to learn more. Anticipation as we get nearer to the opening puck drop of game number one in the opening round of the NCHA quarterfinal playoff between the visiting Concordia University of Wisconsin Falcons and your Adrian College Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. Welcome back, Alex Herman and Brett Carlisle here on ACTV. So happy to have you all join us for what should be a fantastic evening of hockey. Now, Brett. A few weeks ago, the Falcons came to town and they got swept by a score of eight to one and 12 to two. You go into the playoff series facing the very best in the conference. What do you think the Falcons have to do to adjust their game here? Well, I mean, you definitely can't start the way you did last time against these Bulldogs coming into the AIA. I mean, you know it's gonna be fast. You know the Bulldogs are gonna be shooting out right here. We have Sam Ruffin already on the front line, takes a shot early on. So we're gonna have to look at that, and I mean, Concordia is gonna have to come out firing. It's playoff hockey, so anything can happen. This four and 20 and one team could honestly, truly beat the Bulldogs. And we just saw how ferocious these Bulldogs can be in early breakaway attempt. The first shot of the evening stopped by the blocker of Gabe Rosek. This is along the far side corner as a tie up will finally break the puck free. Getting there first is Jaden Shields, tries to forward it up. And Devin Rapana will glove it down. Here's Zach Heinz. Gallops down the right wing, stops and pulls up, but he loses an edge. And this will have to be sent to the slot, connecting there to the stick of Terry Ryder. He's escaped the grasp. Here's Humphreys, moves it over. A quick shot, and that one was sailed high and over the bar. Kudo will send a bounce pass as Luciani gets there to touch up. 
has Spodniak, the leading points getter for the Bulldogs. Moves toward down, he scores! Just like that, it's one to nothing Bulldogs. Uh, Matus Spodniak, I mean, what can you expect from the points leader in the conference, points leader on this team? I mean, beautiful pass up to him. I mean, going all the way down by himself, slipping at five hole right through to get the first goal of the game, a minute and 13 seconds in. The 23rd goal and 45th point for Adrian points leader Matu Spodniak. As at 18.43 in the first period, we get the scoring opened up. And this is what Concordia really has to be careful for. You know that there are so many dangerous players on the ice that you need to keep track of. And case in point there, Matu Spodniak gets things going early. I mean, Matu Spodniak, Sam Ruffin, Ty Enns, all dangerous. Alessio Luciani dangerous as well. So the Concordia University, Wisconsin Falcons really, really have to be on their guard, especially with Spodniak when he comes back out on the ice. Right point, shot stopped by the blocker as it was put down on the ice by Rosek. Confusion on the icing as it's blown down with 17.56. And we'll head back to the O-zone of the Bulldogs. A packed house here at Arrington. This is a similar crowd we see when playoffs start to get rolling and I have to imagine the attendance is only gonna grow from here. Well, I mean, honestly, last year when we had when we had the championship here, when St. Norbert came and played the Bulldogs here, I mean, it was they had to have bleachers over there. People were stacked up high. I mean, everybody was stacked around the glass. So, it's always fans always coming out here in the AIA and also visiting visiting teams also come and travel as just as far as they need to, so that way they come root on their team. And there you see the stats we mentioned earlier from a two Spaniak. Twenty five games played. 23 goals, 22 assists for a grand total of 45 points. Is in the top five in all three of those categories in all of NCAA Division III play. As we continue on, far side, it's Gil Shammer who will hold it. And now in neutral, Sardelli will swipe it down low. Tallarico will stop it on the backhand. And Swade will get a pass as he starts his approach. Near side, it's dropped for Summers. Scanning, he gets it to Shields. Walking in, here's a pass over, and it was redirected, but didn't have the angle to go. But he almost saw a second goal there for the Bulldogs. We're still in the early minutes of the opening period. Here's a two on one. Puck moved over, there's an arm up on the play. And the first penalty will be assessed against the white, black, and gold. Going to the box, it's gonna be Bradley Summers. Get the official call here. It's gonna be a hooking, so he'll have to sit down for two minutes. And out to the power play, five on four are the Falcons. The penalty kill brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy. It's, I love that, I love that. I love Athletico, it's such a great company, honestly. I, I'll praise them, I have a couple of people from my high school who work in Athletico, so it's always great to see that they're a company that gets up on the board here. Shot came off of the stick of Joey Petronak, sailed wide. Sam Ruffin will hold and dump it back to Terry Ryder. DDD pass intended for Matt Kudo as he's able to clear. Gave Rosek out of the blue paint to stop behind his crease. Grant Newcomer, a horizontal pass. Is able to find Zach Bridges as he breaks in. Pressing against Ruffin. It's knocked free and off the top glass. And back to the point. Nick Lieben gets it. Right side, sends a shot on. Easy kick save there for Nick Tallarico. His first of the evening. Petronak puts one on, tipped off the stick of Ruffin on the release. Never reached the net. Now under the goal line, Petronak waiting for a pass up top. Newcomer finally gives it to him. Here's a shot, and that one redirected wide. Bulldogs trying to kill this off as they're able to finally clear it down. Arrington Faithful will applaud. And a new PK unit out for the rest of the 47 seconds. 
you know, it's a good job by the Bulldogs, but I see a little a little light for the Falcons, honestly. I mean, they were making some good passes, and they've got a couple good shots on in this power play. One could possibly slip through. Tallarico, a 180, and bounces it off the end wall. Reutemann in center to Dane Sardelli. Off. Here's Reutemann looking for a lane. Fires one on, hit off of a stick, and bounced on to the right face-off circle. Spencer tries to clear, but he couldn't. Final seconds. Summer will exit the box. Back to five on five. Luciani is down low. Looking towards the net. What a move. Arm up on the play. And just like that, the tables will turn. And this time, it's the Bulldogs to the five on four power play with 14.59 left to go. <laughs> Got to be careful, and you got Luciani and Spadniak go both going down together. I mean, one of them's bound to, if you don't commit a penalty, one of them's bound to score, honestly. The power play percentage for the Bulldogs, 41.3% conversion rate. Nearing that 50% mark, you know it's deadly, and they can strike at any time. Here's a one-timer, kicked aside, now in front. Shields will get it back. Walking down low, left circle. A saucer moving to Summers. Ruffin, back to Shields. Puts it over, it was intercepted. Makasimu didn't realize he had enough time to look for a break, could have had a two on one. He had scanned the options correctly, elected to clear instead. So they get a line change. Kirchhoff, able to knock it free. His pass taken away. Here's Zach Heinz. Ends will move up with speed. Battles with Dittmer to get there. Rims around the half wall. Shields down low, Summer picks up. Underneath the red, and the pass was off the target. And the first 60 seconds of the power play successfully killed off by the Falcons. Once again, this puck lofted, but out of play. And we'll get a whistle, a momentary stoppage in play. And here comes your line that you want on this penalty kill, or sorry, power play. 54 seconds left, you have Spodniak, Luciani, and you have the good defender of Chase Spencer in as well. Just in case things go wrong. Tallarico will play it to Spodniak. Fights it free and getting it now is Chase Spencer. Alessio Luciani leads the rush. Onsides over the blue, but lost control as he was checked by Joey Petronak. Tied up once again is Riley Murphy, and Concordia able to clear. One to nothing, still the score. 13-19 left to go in the first period here at Arrington Ice Arena. Spodniak taken down, no call. And I believe it's whistled down for an offside. So 13 seconds remaining in the five on four. As we'll take the face off in front of the penalty box in neutral ice. Yeah, I mean, it's a good job by the Falcons right now. Only 13 seconds left in this power play for the Bulldogs and they've actually held their own. I mean, they've kept Adrian out of their zone most of this power play now. Murphy checked off before he could touch up. And this was chopped out of the ice surface of play. And once again, we'll take the face off at neutral ice, but opposite this time in front of the bench of Jim Masso's Falcons. Here's Klein. Lovasek looks towards the net. Shot blocker to side by Rosek. Circling around, it's dropped back for Connor May. Puts it through his legs. Now in the slot, here's Lovasek looking towards the front. It's covered and held for the whistle. Gabe Rosek, like we said, he's a 9-1-1 save percentage is really showing. And that, is, that is a goalie who is going to even have a going to have a bright future here in the NCHA if he stays here. 
another local Michigander, Gray Brosek is, is from East Lansing, Michigan. Played his junior hockey with the Sioux Eagles in the Northern Ontario Junior Hockey League before making the switch over to collegiate play as a freshman. Have to wonder if he caught any Adrian games in his young upbringing. Well, I would imagine so. I mean, obviously being a Michigan native, so I'm sure he uh, ventured to watch the Bulldogs play in their games. Here's a chance for Kirchhoff. Didn't have the speed. Tallarico faked him out. Made it look like he was going to pass around the boards. And it was overskated. Can't be a Michigander and not know Adrian Gouch. Oh, really? Yeah, especially in hockey. I mean, we've become so known here at the AIA for our hockey teams. Obviously, winning that national championship last year makes us even more known. So a lot of people, a lot of recruits coming in for sure. That puck was sent into the bench areas. We'll take a pause with 11.47 left to go in the first period. Alex Herman and Brett Carlisle here on ACTV this evening. So happy to have you all join us here for the opening round of the NCHA playoffs. This faceoff was won as Murphy will pick up and he's taken down with a hip check. Thought there was almost a penalty for a second, but it was actually offsides. Not sure if I saw that call or not. Didn't seem like the body had crossed over the blue before the puck did, but obviously, as spectators, can't really make that decision. I mean, maybe he honestly was trying to just call an offsides just because the penalty and it saved them both a pen or saved the Concordia University Falcon guy a penalty of hip checking. So whatever penalty he could have honestly gotten from that. Here's Terry Ryder, will saucer a pass in as it caromed around the kick plate. Murphy gets it over, and a bouncer up top, left point for Ryder. Kudo walking in with a nice move, looking towards the net, fired a shot, and it bounced off of a stick, and he couldn't get the muscle that he was looking for. Summers, near side, Kudo to Ryder. Back to Kudo, opens up. Ryder, down low, looking for the one-timer with Summers. As a collision in the blue paint. Some fisticuffs too. Riley Murphy getting into it there with Grant Newcomer. Gabe Rosek was knocked down to the ice. And there is going to be a penalty call here as the play was transitioning from left to right. I think it's gonna be Matching calls potentially. We'll see what happens here. There was a little bit of a miscommunication or altercation, I should say, down by Rosek as I, I caught him laying down like in his crease section. So interesting too, no penalties being put up. As Ty Enns will get this on the left side, sliding it over, and it's put in by Sam Ruffin. The Dogs take a two to nothing lead with 10.41 left to go in the first. Oh man, Alex, look at this shot. Look at this pass, I should say. I mean, beautiful all the way to ends and slides it just by the hair on his chin to Sam Ruffin and Ruffin taps it in for his 11th goal on the season and 34th point on the year. The captain of the team, really, really showing out. What a great hockey play that was, as Ty ends and Kirchhoff having to be separated here by the official. Getting into it a little prematurely before the puck has dropped. We'll have to keep an eye on it. The second game that we saw these two teams play a couple of weeks ago had a couple of dangerous moments towards the tail end as Ruffin will put it over, and a one-timer was blocked off of the stick of Zach Heinz. Kirchhoff gets a breakaway, looking towards the net, but he puts it wide. Well, Kirchhoff was cherry-picking there. I mean, and honestly, I don't even think he really knew what to do with the puck. I don't think he could find himself more wide open. Yeah, that was definitely a set play there as tie ends will collect on the far side wall. Has shields, right-handed shot, puts it on, in between the feet, and they score! 
The rebound was sitting all alone in the blue paint. And the Bulldogs took full advantage as Zach Heinz gives Adrian College a three to nothing lead. I mean, a shot comes in. You saw the puck just laying right underneath Rosek. And Zach Heinz says, hey, that's free. Taps it right back through and hits the back of the net. Three nothing really quickly here. Not even 10 minutes, not even halfway through the first period. It didn't quite look like any of the Falcon players had a clue where the puck was on the ice. Obviously took a couple of bounces awkwardly, but no chance there for Gabe Rosek as this game really starting to shift in favor of Adrian College. Matthew Redding is tied up. Lasso's one to Klein. Forwarded over, here's a hefty shot by Spencer. And it's eaten up by a quick chest from Gabe Rosek. That is a dangerous shot by Spencer. It was kind of like just right on though. Here's the breakaway for Kirchhoff before we saw the third goal. And all alone, undetected, snuck behind enemy lines. That was a scary chance. Could be a completely different hockey game if that one was put home. Good job by Tyler Rico, though, for staying in the net and defending it. Here's Spencer to Luciani. With a nice move, the toe drag got through, but it was poked away from him before he could shoot. As it sent up top for Klein. Spencer to Spodniak. Over skates, now puts it through. Handcuffed in the corner, broken free. Klein tries to hit Redding for the pass, didn't get to the blade. Luciani spinning off, looking towards the front, taken down, it's cleared. There's another breakaway, all alone, moving in, and a save by Tallarico. Derek Humphreys was all alone on the blue line. Nobody saw him, the pass got through as Luciani goes to the net and Rosek denies him off the stick handling play and an additional backhand. How quick is he? That is crazy. But look at this. I don't even know how you have someone on the offensive end for the Falcons all the way behind the, de the defense. Maybe Adam Krug, I guess, isn't really worried about it because Tallarico is just holding his own in the net. So. But that's, that's dangerous. Now it's an interesting story. Jim Masso, the former coach of the Vermont Lumberjacks of the Eastern Hockey League, one who I had the pleasure of sharing time with. There was a game many seasons ago, the Lumberjacks played against the Boston Junior Rangers, where I was actually able to witness a very similar strategy of keeping one player high due to defensive lapses in the Junior Rangers game plan, which then ultimately led to a win for the Lumberjacks, as here's another breakaway, and Bridges overskated the puck, was offside, and gets called with 7.40 left to go in the first period. I mean, whatever you think you can do to get a goal and maybe make this game more interesting, but got a little bit excited there. Look at Luciani. Nifty moves Ooh. going through two defenders and so quick with the puck. It's dangerous. Lovasek will tie up the draw and bat it back as it's in Bulldog possession. Here's John Calgin. Slides it over. Somebody there to pick up at first and trailing behind the play now is Justin Schwartzmiller. This was sent up into the netting. Excuse me, that was Kirchhoff as well. So rotating the same players out of the zone, you're basically playing a, a power play situation when you're in the defensive zone for the Falcons. It's five on four down low with another man trailing at the blue line. It's an interesting strategy and really makes things more difficult when you're running the game plan if you're coach Adam Krug. We see Shields racing down there to get the icing, so that way it'll come back to the other end here. 
but man, I Adam Krug is having a lot of faith in his goalie to save those pucks after those cherry picking Falcons. And that's I honestly I actually kinda like it, Alex. I really I really do. I really like the I really like the, the play that they're trying to do here. Well it's a bold strategy. And now the man all alone is gonna be Dane Sardelli. Dane, the biggest player easily on the ice at six foot seven, 210 pounds, not somebody you wanna run into. Jaden Shields gets it over, shot on, kicked aside by the blocker, and it's cleared out. Sardelli gets there, but catching up with a big hit was Spencer as he absolutely leveled him. Yeah, that may have been a little bit of a, hey, don't cherry pick anymore, honestly. I We're think we'll catch it here again. Same play, shot straight up the gut. And check out that hit. Laying down the boom, Chase Spencer gives the crowd a taste of Bulldog hockey. Shields wraps it around for Connor May. He's been red hot lately. This is lost on the blue. Klein will get it back to May, who was trying to change at the moment and will stay on. Back the other way is Grant Newcomer. Opens up. Split across for Humphreys as he's taken down by a hard check from Cameron Babiak. Man, the Bulldogs are just laying it on the Falcons right now. Here's Murphy breaking loose to the net scores! It's four to nothing! Riley Murphy with 5.59 left to go. The Bulldogs are rolling! He had someone's stick in his hand too while he shot that puck. Do you see that? That was crazy. Riley Murphy was taking two sticks and shooting the puck. Wow. What a play that was, Riley Murphy. Amazing that he was able to persevere through and somehow put that in the back of the net with a stick under his arm, taking some baggage with him as he goes. At a CMU. It's tied with Klein. And there's a look to shake it free. Finally it does. Swade is there to meet it. Has Murphy on the right side. Sends it through. Murphy on one hand will fend his way around. Klein up top for Babiak. Misplayed it. Still have a trailer back for the Falcons. It's Zach Bridges. Klein is aware and is playing a little bit more passively at the blue line. As he takes this one away at center ice. Sends it on in. Rosek will stop and spin off, leaving it for Lucas Durant. Heinz, a backhand for Ryder. But Dinier will get it. Sends a hard pass up. Bulldogs were offside, so they couldn't enter. Ketterman towards the right side. A slap shot taken. Way off the mark. Came from the stick of Malik. Underneath the red, Bulldogs control. A Denier, a short pass for Enns, and now to the left for Ruffin. Spins away, needs an option. As this is in the slot, Heinz ripped a shot, and it was blocked by Rosek. Ruffin to Ryder, across the way for a Denier, now down low. Sliding one through, that hit off of the toe, potentially, of Rosek, caromed wide. Kirchhoff once again overskated, was over the blue. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder that 50 50 tickets will be on sale in the lobby during the first second intermission. That was an icing. Icing, I believe, was the call. Because Kirchhoff had to go back to the blue line and the Bulldogs raced down, so that makes him confused about it for a second. And there we see. Nick Wybin, we talked about him a little bit in the pre-show. 
The points leader for the Falcons, 25 games played, four goals, 11 assists for a total of 15 points. Shields has some space. Decides not to shoot, but Spodniak does, and it's five to nothing dogs. An absolute hammer from Matu Spodniak. This is almost too easy, honestly. I mean, did you see that? It was wide open from Shields. Look at the passing play here. Full control in the offensive zone. Great awareness from Shields not to let it go. Spodniak down on one knee, puts it in. The Bulldogs are basically playing on rookie mode at this point. They really are, and 24 goals now and 46 points for Matus Spodniak, and I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot more. We still haven't even ended the first period. 3.35 left to go is the time remaining in the first frame. It's five to nothing, dogs. 16 to four are the shot total in favor of Adrian College, as here's a long pass from the opposite end of the ice was on net, and Rosek will stop it for the whistle. It's just the Bulldogs are just looking like a different team right now. Five goals first period. They, I've seen them play like this before, but that was this was last year's team that I saw. You know, the team that didn't after the first game losing to Utica didn't lose the rest of the year and. Different Bulldogs team right now. This puck just barely bounced over the blue. It's whistled down for the offsides. So we'll take the face off in center. And obviously, Brett, you've had more time to spend with this team than I have, me only being a freshman here and seeing just about a full season of hockey with the Bulldogs. But it's impressive what they're able to do on both ends of the ice. Got the fortunate chance to watch some of the games last year on hockey TV, knowing that I was going to be able to come to the school, or I shouldn't say hockey TV, on, on YouTube. And at this point in the season, you, you do see some similarities with last year's roster. Obviously, they, they lost some big pieces, but the players that they have now definitely making up for those gaps. Oh, yeah, Tallarico, I mean, honestly, big shoes, big shoes to fill after he lost our goalie. And uh, Cam Gray, I mean, he was... The, one of the best goalies I think I've ever seen here at Adrian College, my time here. Um, but Tyler Rico obviously holding his own in that net. and Obviously big shoes to fill. Matt Eller, a big loss, a defenseman. I mean, he was a huge role player here on this Bulldogs team. But yeah, there's definitely some similarities. And you know, they, what they say, it's very hard to repeat as a Natty Champ team, but this Bulldogs team definitely has the talent and they're starting to show it here inside of Playoff time. Well, if there's any point in the season that you really need to turn it on, it's right around now. And if this is any idea of what we might see for the rest of the playoffs, you gotta buckle up. Because this is a scary team to play against. This was lifted out of the zone once again. The Falcons still holding their strategy of one man back looking for potential breakaways as Swade will play it through and shoves off Reutemann. A reversal on the body check there. Ryder steps off the blue. Couldn't pick it up. Some oohs and ahs from the crowd. Wow Cafe coming alive. One of the premier destinations to watch an Adrian College hockey game. Murphy drops back for Swade. Moves towards the front, broken away from him. It's Bridges who will get there. And come in contact with Kuda as he skates off. Swade with a nice move on the toe drag. Didn't have all the space he needed. Bridges on a misplay, now has a breakaway. To the net, blockered and saved by Tallarico. The Bulldogs fans love that. Finally nearing one minute and I think Concordia University needs a little bit of a break inside this locker room here at the intermission. In transition, Bulldogs are hunting down low. A quick pass, almost pinballed in. Hit the outside of the apron, and another hit down low. Here's Adinie, moving it over, looking for it. They do it again, tic-tac-toe. It's over to Zach Heinz, and in the back of the net, it's six to nothing, Bulldogs, with 36.6 left to go in the first period. Let's look at it. 
bang to Denier, to Shields, inside, beautiful shot. Textbook for the Bulldogs. That's Heinz, that's his second, right? We have two Bulldogs who are looking for hat tricks tonight now, when Spodniak and Heinz. This is textbook, textbook play. Wow, what a way to open up the playoffs for the Bulldogs, an unbelievable start to the first round. In just the first period, we've seen six goals. Spodniak will move this over. Redding is on sides. Drops for Shield, misplayed. A little time left, and a three on one. It's broken up by a great stick play from Adinie. Gets his stick taps from the teammates. Skating back is Ausmus. Little time left, and not enough as that shot was sticked aside after the horn by Tallarico. And the Arrington faithful come alive, showing their support for the Bulldogs. An unbelievable first 20 minutes of play. Six to nothing is the score in favor of your Adrian College Bulldogs. What did you see after 20, Brett? I honestly saw Bulldogs got everything they wanted. I saw a little bit of light at the beginning of the period for the Falcons. They were making some good passes during their power play, but the Bulldogs were just all business after that. Unloading, unleashing the dam. It was flooding the Falcons out. I mean, honestly, it was just this beautiful first period by Adrian College. We'll see how things develop too. The interesting strategy from Coach Jim Masso to keep one player high looking for breakaways. Not something that you typically see, but it almost worked for them a couple of times as we skate into the second period with a six to nothing Bulldog lead, Alex Herman and Brett Carlisle here on ACTV. We'll take a quick intermission and rejoin us for period number two of the NCHA quarterfinal game number one. As you anxiously await all of the amazing experiences that will define your college years, you stand today, students, on the threshold of one of the most magical times in your life. is looking for leaders, student athletes with the tenacity to keep the Bulldogs at the top, the forefront, in and out of the classroom. The Bulldogs are looking for talent, 
Character, hard work, grit. Leaders who can electrify sold-out crowds, got out a last-line shift, will their team to victory, hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth, and be a part of a legend in the making. Think you have what it takes to become a Bulldog? Visit adrian.edu to learn more. Adrian College is a pinpoint like no other. With our 77 undergraduate degrees, 47 majors, and 21 broad fields of study, Adrian has a one-of-a-kind, hands-on learning experience for everyone. Do you want to visit the campus of Adrian College in person? Visit adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Again, that's adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Come take in the beautiful facilities at Adrian College for yourself.
April 6, 2021, I was sitting in my office and an email popped into my inbox from someone in your graduating class today. The email said, Dear President Docking, Back in August, I had emailed you in regards to the state of the well-being of the campus community during the COVID spike. At that time, I was incredibly anxious about the prospect of spending my senior year of college sitting at my kitchen table in my hometown trying to finish my seminar projects in the event we switched to all online learning. As I type this email now in April, I cannot describe to you the gratitude that my fellow students and I have for Adrian remaining open on campus for the duration of the school year. I wanted to take the time to thank the Adrian College community, the faculty, the staff, for allowing us to have as normal of a year as possible in a world that simply did not want that to happen. I look forward to walking across the stage in May knowing that I was still able to enjoy time with my friends and the Bulldog community during my senior year. All the best, Max Birmingham, class of 2021. Max, you've got to stand up so we can give you a round of applause. For those of us on this stage, today is one of the most exciting days of the year. We love to see the wonder and anticipation in the eyes of our new students as all of you anxiously await all of the amazing experiences that will define the years ahead.
ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from Arrington Ice Arena. It's period number two of the opening quarterfinal NCHA playoff matchup between the visiting Concordia University of Wisconsin Falcons and your Adrian College Bulldogs. Alex Herman and Brett Carlisle here on ACTV. There are the stats for the first period. Bulldogs absolutely hitting the spread tonight. Matus Spodniak with two goals, Heinz with two goals, Riley Murphy with a tally. Also has three points tonight. They're all over the place as the puck is dropped and once again underway at the AIA as Heinz will shovel a backhander over, sent on net, moved aside by Rosek. Ends, controlling, puts it in the center. Ruffin had a Dinier on the wide side. There's a loose break. Coming down, slid into the slot behind the skates of Newcomer. He couldn't control. Here are the Falcons establishing zone. A long shot sailed wide. Moved around the way for a Dinier. Now to Heinz. Picks up speed. Takes the wide route. Tried to put it through for Ruffin, who was streaking towards the center. it now is Ketterman, plays to the outside, easily taken away by Babiak, a long shot, bounced out of the glove of Tallarico, got a piece of it, but couldn't hold on in the webbing, as a stretch pass gets to Luciani, but took a hot skip and a bounce over his stick, and it's gonna be whistled down for icing with 18.47. And there we go. 18.47, we had a goal the last period, so uh, things have slowed down just a little bit, tiny bit, but yeah. Shots on goal here, 18. Uh, I mean, Adrian's just, just commanding the offensive side tonight. I mean, obviously, like you said earlier, I mean, they have 18 points total and three with Heinz, three with Jaden Shields, so. Things move from end to end as it's slapped around the kick plate. Zach Bridges will hold on to it. Right-handed shot, plays it with the backhand as it's Mason Ausmus will leap it forward. Spodniak gets this over for Redding. Two on two, dropped for Luciani. Towards the front, what a goal! It's seven to nothing. The Bulldogs are up by a touchdown. Once again, tic-tac-toe. And I take a look at it. And it was a nice pass from Spodniak, Redding passed it back to Luciani and he saw him cross over and said, hey, you're open for business and found the back of the net and yeah, touchdown lead for the Bulldogs. Open for business, things are here, the doors wide open at a huge seven to nothing lead for Adrian College. Second period only just begun as Spodniak will trek up the ice. Has two goals tonight, looking for the hat trick. Kudo receives on the deep right point. Redding tied up for a second. Here's Ryder with the shot, gloved down and held by Rosek. Tracked it all the way in. Yeah, that was a good shot by Terry Ryder. I mean, right in the middle of everything. Thought maybe he could slip one pass, but it was a good Good glove by Rosek. There you see Zach Heinz. Two goals and an assist tonight for his 23 points on the season. Connor May tried to play it through. Malik gets this for Kirchhoff. Now in the slot. Nobody could hold on to it. Bounces the other way. Here comes Connor May with some speed. Breaking down low, Jack knifed away from him. Calgin will support, and pool stick it along the yellow boards. Now back towards the opposite end of the ice. Ryder to Calgin. Quickly lifted May towards the outside. Calgin with a soft shot. Easy stick save for Rosek. Wraparound chance held up on the post. 
And we'll get a whistle with 16.44 left to go in the second period. Things have slowed down a little bit, but obviously with the area, you have a goal here in the second period of off of Redding. So 7-0 our score. Bulldogs are winning a lot of those face-offs as well, so that's very good by them. Tyler Rico has been very exceptional in that between the pipes tonight. 69% for the Bulldogs to the Falcons, 31. Every category so far there are dominating. The only one that they are not is the power play slot on both of those teams had one each in the first. Neither was able to convert. But we are five on five here as Murphy tried to shake free but had his puck taken away from him. Summers lost his footing. Don't know if he got caught up with the stick or just took a tumble over his own feet. Dittmer gets it in quickly, sends it up. Turned over as Humphreys will get at center. Newcomer puts it wide, bounced off of the right corner. So it's fine down low. Definitely have to notice really the change in pace of play so far. We saw a really fiery first period from the Bulldogs. Things were moving very fast, and while they still are controlling, a little bit more hesitant now. Yeah, I feel like that's almost a goal there. Almost got ricocheted off. Ty ends almost got a goal. But I think that's just how it has to be. I mean, second period starts, and obviously Concordia was made a little bit of changes in the locker room, and it slows down the Bulldogs a little bit until they figure out what they did. And I think they're going to slowly start to figure that out, and I think a little bit more floodgates going to open up. Interesting to note, too, their strategy that they adjusted in the first, where they had one man trailing, now hasn't been seen in the first six minutes of this frame as a Dinier chops one over to ends. He's bumped off, and once again in neutral ice, a Dinier with a backhand dump in. Gets the change, and coming to replace him is Matt Kudo. Sardelli has Ketterman as the option. He walks around. Now to Sardelli. In the slot. Petronak with plenty of time. And using it not too wisely there. As he sends that one into the uprights. Yeah, I mean, had it all the time in the world to shoot that puck, but chose to shoot it at the last second, which was a poor decision. Ricocheted off a stick up into the netting, so... There you see Nick Tallarico, the senior this year for the Bulldogs. Played a lot of games and done a great job this season. Luciani break in. Interesting to see Deshaun Stewart as well, not in the lineup. Unfortunately out with an injury at the time, so. I like that signature from Luciani. Always is like coming down, use one of the arms to block off the defender, and then brings it with his stick to try and get in front and see what he can do with it. He's done. He's had a quite a few goals doing that, especially in the past. So talented player. I always liked watching him play. Continuing on, this is moved down low, a blind pass. Found a stick. And now it's to Spodniak. Right side, dead angle. Could have shot, but decided not to. Ryder walked the blue and had it stripped from him. It's pressed by two blue sweaters. Checked hard into the boards here, Spodniak. A three on two and a whistle on the play. Terry Ryder, I believe, is gonna get called down here. Is after the play behind the vision Hit Andrew Malik, and a cross-checking call against Terry Ryder. 
will send the Falcons back to the power play for the second time tonight for the next two minutes. Yeah, Terry Ryder is a classmate, really nice guy. Um, he was, I saw that hit, I mean, could have gone either way, honestly. Could have called something, could have not called something. Uh, but referees decided, uh, hey, two minutes is not that long, so you can go sit there for a couple. Got to stay poised at this stage of the game. Still plenty of hockey left to play, but you're up by a lot. As Sardelli put a shot on, eaten up by Tallarico. And some more pushing and shoving. It's separated quickly by the officials. Kirchhoff and Babiak exchanging pleasantries. Now they're gonna go right next to each other in the face off. Still got some words, even before we drop the puck. Connor May couldn't win it back, as Reitman will hold on. And Klein got a blade on it, and it was tipped up into the netting. We'll take the face off once again on that left side, but instead this time, both teams getting some fresh legs out there, a full five-man unit now replacing on the power play for the Falcons. The thing is, is last year we did a, uh, where we mic'd up the um, hockey players and that was that was actually really enjoying to hear what they actually say on the ice. Obviously it's not very kind words to each other, but it's just honestly funny what they say to each other on the ice sometimes. A lot of things have to be bleeped quite, quite frequently. Yeah, but I mean, it's, uh, you know, you know out there. I mean, obviously you're a hockey player, so you just, you know. But they they all they all shake hands at the end, which is such a great sport. Having that happen, the beauty of the game. Players, even though might not be the best of friends when they're playing, always show their respects at the end of the game. Everybody shakes hands. One of the most cherished traditions in in all of hockey. You see it a lot in the NHL playoffs. You don't see it typically during the regular season. But here's Lovasek with a chance. Looks towards the front. Almost slid it through the five hole. And closing the door there was Gabe Rosek. Continuing on, it's Zach Bridges. Will slide it for newcomer as he's hit hard by Adinier. Kept his footing there. Ring I wide. Iowa Denier is not a person that you want to see coming at you. Very big player. Denier coming. sits at six foot five, 195. So he's just two inches short of Dane Sardelli for the Falcons, who's six foot seven. We talked about him a little bit in the first period, had a couple of breakaway opportunities. Denier's also got the drip. He really he does. does. He does have the drip. I always see his uh, pregame photos. He's always coming in with some of the cleanest shoes out there. And he's got a pretty sweet set of custom skates as well to add. It's, it's kind of hard to pick up on camera when we're doing the TV broadcast, but if you look closely in some of the pictures that we're able to come in possession of, you'll, you'll notice he's got a Jordan Travis Scott shoe painted on his skate, except normally that shoe is white and blue or white and brown. This time they painted it in the white, black, and Adrian gold. So very unique for him. Honestly, considering getting a pair for myself, because it's, I mean, it's pretty cool. Honestly, I would too. I mean, <laughs> I don't play hockey at all, but that's actually just, that's just cool. I mean, unique, so. It's the cool thing about hockey players, always, innovating and figuring out ways to bring cool style and fun aspects to the game as Swade, soccer kicked a pass to himself, was in the slot all alone. Spencer now to the front, moves it over, open net, nobody could put it home. Murphy tried to work around Mattisiu. Checked off by Spencer, a bouncing puck in transition. Odd man opportunity if they can hurry. Shields. Protecting the puck, finally taken away from him with the body check. Now with it is Kruchensky. Reaching the halfway point in this period, 10-11 left to go. 
in the second. Score still seven to nothing, Adrian. And surprisingly enough, shot total for that score you'd think would be a lot higher, but it's only 23 to seven. Bulldogs have really made their shots count, so. And as many shots on goal as Adrian has goals for the Falcons. Something to note there. Shows you how Bulldogs have just been so in command here through one and a half and finally a goal going through for the Falcons. Uh, that's an awkward play and a tough bounce for Nick Tallarico. I think there was some miscommunication on this play and the Falcons will jump on the board for the first time tonight. We'll see it here. Puck was rimmed around. Looked like it was lost sight of. And a quick step up made there. Is put in the back of the net. And it's seven to one now the score. That's unfortunate for Tallarico. He really thought it was coming around the back side of the net and it just popped right in front of him and they took a shot on goal and obviously when the goalie's blind and he doesn't know the puck's right there and you have everything wide open underneath him, he's gonna eh, score that puck. The third shot of the second period resulted in a goal. So the score now seven to one. For those of you just tuning in here on ACTV, Alex Herman and Brett Carlisle with 9-10 left to go in the second frame of play in this NCHA quarterfinal matchup. Tied up, puck battle ensuing. Nobody able to break it free, and finally it does. Tie ends, sends a pass up. Ruffin, if he hadn't touched it, would have had a breakaway for Heinz. Played to the middle, taken away by Duran. Wrapped around up top. Sardelli lost it to a Dinier. Now here's Ruffin walking in. Now towards the front, taken down was Heinz. He'll sit all alone. And breaking out now is the Falcons. Here's a chance for Ausmus with some speed looking towards the front, a toe save made by Tallarico. Also Terry Ryder in on that as well, getting a bump on the stick from behind. Tie ends, finds Spodniak. Pulls up, assessing the options, gets to Luciani. Spodniak to Luciani on the doorstep. It didn't go and somehow stayed out. Newcomer in transition. Gets this over. A backhander from Roitman. Sticked aside and bounced off the end wall. Here's Spodniak once again towards the front. A spinning play there in the five hole. Nobody got it. It did end up in the back of the net, but I do believe the whistle was blown. Good action here at Aaron Tonice Arena tonight. Adrian College hosting Concordia University of Wisconsin. Mattisiu picks up and bounces off, checked into the boards. Spencer looking to hold on. May tried to throw a pass. Here's a three on one. Moved over for Calgin. Down the near side, opening up in the slot. Bounced off of a body. Now the Bulldogs, I like to highlight a little bit that uh, they are Matus Spodniak number one in the nation for goals and adding a couple more. He's only one goal in front of the second place man and now he's two, possibly three goals above depending on their season ending as well. He's got 24 goals now on the season. So Spodniak remaining in that number one spot. Adrian also number one in the nation on power play goals. The next team is behind them with, I believe they're at 32 or 35, one or the other, so. Connor May spins off, gets this for Summers, puts it through, loose scramble, and it somehow kept out. 
And there's an arm up on a play as well, a hooking call. I don't know if it's going against the Bulldogs or the Falcons. And it looks like now Ben Prismenti is going to the box. So it is indeed a Bulldog power play, the second for tonight. They weren't able to convert on their first, but they'll get a second opportunity here with 16, 17 left to go. And that was kind of weird. My bad, Alex, I'm sorry, but that was actually kind of weird. I really didn't actually know about that hooking call. Down low, there's so much going on. I'm surprised the referee kind of picked that up, picked up on that. I actually thought it was going to be something on, I believe Suede was down by the goalie. I thought it was going to be something in there. Quick passes coming straight off of the sticks as Ruffin tried to send a pass through and it cleared the protective netting and bounced off of the back wall. Nobody got hit there, thankfully. Some spectators down low in that far side corner. See a Let's Go Bulldogs poster out there for some of the youngsters that come to watch Adrian play. Yeah, down in that southeast corner, that's where those bleachers were last year when St. Norbert came into town during the playoffs. Shields with a nice play to keep things going. Just barely held on while he was at the blue. We'll get a pass back here as Ruffin will look towards the net. It's jammed up in the center. Falcons playing good defense, trying to kill off this penalty. Shields towards the front, shot was blocked. Cleared the zone, Tallarico out to meet it as Ruffin to stop as he'll get the initial pass. Under a minute left to go in the five on four. Shields, excuse me, that's Sam Ruffin who was behind the net. Find Spodniak, who still is looking for his third goal tonight, looking to complete the hat trick. He'll skate up center ice, down Main Street. Breaks free and Luciani gets handcuffed along the high glass and the Falcons able to clear it down. Austin Klein now to Spodniak, turning on the Jets, breaks fast Petronak. In front is Redding, looking for a lane, finally gets it, a pile up on the highway as this is over, as what a save made by Rosek. Ran Larceny. Matus Bodniak had the entire net to work with. Look at this play. <laughs> oh man, that was very close. Stretching across the acrobatics, Cirque du Soleil. Need to give the stick taps out to Gabe Rosek. That's going to do it for the power play as we're back to five on five even straight. Hey, you, did you see Matus Spodniak after that? He was oh, like, man. oh, come on. He's like, that was so wide open for me. And Rosek said, no, not a hat trick for you. How he got a piece of it, I don't know. Picked it up at the last second. And that just shows you how highly skilled all of these players are. You might think from a general perspective at a score of seven to one, that one team is definitely better than the other, but that just proves how good everybody is on the ice. You never know who's gonna have a night, who might make a good play. And a lot of these hockey players coming from higher levels of junior hockey before making the jump to NCAA collegiate play. Great example there for Gabe Rosek. Yeah, but you definitely know that Matus Spodniak is going to come out with a fire when he gets back out on that ice, and he wants that hat trick. And now that Rosek took that away from him right there, it's going to build a fire. And where there's fire, there's smoke. Matus Spodniak really is wanting that goal back. Mason Ausmus pitched it in. And the Dinier will stop and wrap around towards the top. Ketterman. Overskated it, but Dinier able to take it away and it fluttered up top. 
quickly is Swade will play Sardelli, forcing him to move around. Trudeau backpedaling just for a moment. Pass deflected by the stick of Tenizaka. Murphy in front, potentially a blocker save there. I don't know if Rosek got a piece of it or not, but caromed wide nonetheless. Sardelli, a one-touch pass for Petronac. Pushed hard into the boards by Matt Kudo. Good defensive play from him to stop the offensive rush. A poking play here. Summers towards the front and an arm up. Will we get a penalty shot? No, we won't. It's going to be called down for a slash. And heading to the box now, Derek Humphreys will sit down for two minutes. So another chance here for the, for the Bulldogs on the power play. We'll see it here. What a stick play there. By Swade, yeah, that, that was, I was gonna highlight that. That was, that. That, was, that was beautiful. On the ground, tap it free. Somehow got it to him. Summers getting slashed though, so honestly it's a good penalty, but this could result in a a goal here for the Bulldogs. Winding up was tie ends, sent a hard one towards the front. It was initially stopped by Rosek as sending one on there was Ruffin. Deflected wide. Kirchhoff will press Ruffin and an arm up once again. And both of the players will get penalties here. Ruffin very confused about this. And I have to agree with him. Kirchhoff is going to go to the box for a clear slash. And Ruffin as well may have said something that we can't hear up in the box. And they share some kind words between the two of them. <laughs> oh, man. Nothing but niceness. Yeah, nothing but kind words is what I like to say. <laughs> it's gonna be four on three now. Sam Ruffin really not liking that one and at all. You see it there. There was the slash, a hold, and then a punch sent on Ruffin. And for me, seemingly didn't seem like he had done much. We're all a little confused here, but officials made the call as this is moved over, sent on, and it was high and wide. You know, I have a grad class with Sam Ruffin, so I'll, I'm going to see <laughs> like what he thought about that play on uh, next Thursday. <laughs> see if he uh, Here's see what he thought about that. Spodniak decided not to shoot. Got it over for Matt Redding. Down low, here's Spodniak along the way. Moved wide. And back over the blue are the Bulldogs. It's cleared down. Still playing five on four for the next 46 seconds because the two penalties negated one another. Murphy couldn't shoot there. Dittmer got a piece of it. And we're under 60 to play in the second period. Murphy all alone and a glove save made by Rosek as he holds on with 52.8 left to go in the frame. Yeah, that was... I still can't get over the, the Matus Spodny, or sorry, uh, Sam Ruffin and Kirchhoff there. That was, just love seeing, love seeing hockey, honestly. I love seeing playoff hockey. It's, playoffs in anything is just so much better in the regular season. You never know what can happen. It's unpredictable. And there are times where strategies are taken out, game plans ripped up. And two nice saves there from Nick Tallarico as he stayed right on top of things. You have to hope at this point, too, that things stay at least somewhat civil between these two squads. Neither of them really demonstrated that they liked one another the last time that they met just a few short weeks ago. So you have to wonder if some of that energy is carrying over. Uh, definitely a fight, that's for sure. Uh, two teams 
I feel like everybody in the NCHA is rivals with each other, is not just one specific. There's another nice save made by Rosek on Calvin, excuse me, on Calgin. As this is lofted up top, pushing it back down low. That was Austin Klein. Shields will dump it back down low, killing off the final seconds of the second. And we've played now 40 minutes, and the Bulldogs holding a 7-1 to one lead going into the third regulation period here at Arrington Ice Arena. Sam Shields, a newcomer, having a little bit of words now, so it's going to be high tempers, high flares in this uh, third period, Alex. I like what I'm seeing from both sides. Things quieting down just a little bit in the goal column. Only one that period for the Bulldogs. It was six to nothing heading into the second 20 minute frame. And now we sit at seven to one. What'd you see from both sides, Brett? Uh, Concordia came out, honestly, uh, I don't want to say it, but kind of a lucky goal. I mean, uh, Tallarico really didn't uh, see that puck coming. So they got, they got one on the board from the Bulldogs, but I mean, everything slowed down a little bit. I think the Bulldogs approach, they're just, I feel like they're just out there skating, passing the puck around. I mean, they had really good looks. Obviously, Spodniak looking for that hat trick, and he saw it down here, but just couldn't get the job done as, but Rosek playing very well that second period. All good hockey from both sides. Alex Herman and Brett Carlisle here on ACTV. Be sure to tune back in for the third period of period number three in this NCHA, NCAA matchup. As you anxiously await all of the amazing experiences that will define your college years, you stand today, students, on the threshold of one of the most magical times in your life. College is looking for leaders, student athletes with the tenacity to keep the Bulldogs at the top, the forefront, in and out of the classroom. The Bulldogs are looking for talent, character, hard work, grit, leaders who can electrify sold out crowds, got out a last line shift, will their team to victory, hit a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth, and be a part of a legend in the making. Think you have what it takes to become a Bulldog? Visit adrian.edu to learn more. 
Adrian College is a pinpoint like no other. With our 77 undergraduate degrees, 47 majors, and 21 broad fields of study, Adrian has a one-of-a-kind, hands-on learning experience for everyone. Do you want to visit the campus of Adrian College in person? Visit adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Again, that's adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Come take in the beautiful facilities at Adrian College for yourself.
April 6, 2021, I was sitting in my office and an email popped into my inbox from someone in your graduating class today. The email said, Dear President Dockey, back in August I had emailed you in regards to the state of the well-being of the campus community during the COVID spike. At that time, I was incredibly anxious about the prospect of spending my senior year of college sitting at my kitchen table in my hometown trying to finish my seminar projects in the event we switched to all online learning. As I type this email now in April, I cannot describe to you the gratitude that my fellow students and I have for Adrian remaining open on campus for the duration of the school year. I wanted to take the time to thank the Adrian College community, the faculty, the staff, for allowing us to have as normal of a year as possible in a world that simply did not want that to happen. I look forward to walking across the stage in May knowing that I was still able to enjoy time with my friends and the Bulldog community during my senior year. All the best, Max Birmingham, class of 2021. Max, you've got to stand up so we can give you a round of applause. For those of us on this stage, today is one of the most exciting days of the year. We love to see the wonder and anticipation in the eyes of our new students as all of you anxiously await all of the amazing experiences that will define the years ahead.
ladies and gentlemen, here live at Arrington Ice Arena. Set to drop the puck for period number three of this opening NCHA quarterfinal matchup between the visiting Concordia University of Wisconsin Falcons and your Adrian College Bulldogs. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Herman with Brett Cargyle here today on ACTV. Happy to have you all join us back here as both teams will take to the ice as we enter the final frame of regulation at a score of seven to one. And once again, we are underway at the AIA as the faceoff is initially won back by the Bulldogs, controlled in neutral ice by Enns and dropped off for Lovacek. Enns gets a lane free, looking towards the front, fakes the shot and almost took a wraparound. Now to Lovacek in between his feet, couldn't play it. Here's a Denier, put one through, looking potentially for a tip, but it was wide. Newcomer dropped back for Humphreys, has some space, and ringing the iron on the side. Oh, was oh, Nick Boland. That was and a an shot. Yeah, an, an early chance here for the Falcons. Have a lot of space that they need to cover to try and get things back within grasp. But a good start with, for them in the opening 60 seconds of this period. Here's Zach Heinz. Spins off, full line change, so he had nobody to pass to. Zach Heinz tonight, two goals and an assist for three points. Looking for the natural hat trick. With it now is Breyer Dittmer. Lost it to Ryder and sent back down. Newcomer taken down. Looked like there might have been a call at first, but Nothing there as this translates to the opposite side. Spodniak lost control of it. Here's Terry Ryder. Puts things through now is Matt Kudo. Time still ticking off. Saw a really quiet second period opposed to the first period, which was filled with six goals after 20 minutes of play. Only two in that second period, one apiece on both sides. As Klein will get it through and fanning on, on the one-timer! And that one somehow stayed out. I thought Luciani put it in on the Michigan move. I think Luciani thought he put it in too. Oh, baby act. High shot, I don't know, thought that one was gonna go in too. Spodniak with a bit of his own. Luciani tried it again. Got shoved off by Mason Ausmus. Oh, that was, that was close and a bouncing puck goes in! Oh my goodness! Uh, Calton, I think that was. I went off of, let's see, let's see what happened here. Calgen, Luciani passes back to him, deflected off a stick, oh. and uh, I think it deflected off of Rosek too, and it bounced right through his arm. It looked unfortunate. Like, yeah, it looked like Lucas Duran might have hit a piece of it with his stick. And with 17-17 left to go in the third, the lead now extended, eight to one. And the Bulldogs will regain their seven goal controlling lead. Kirchhoff looking to make something happen. In between the Hashmans. Reutemann. Down low. And a bouncer is sent wide. Calgen played it through. Connor May needs some speed. Finds it here. Moving over and almost getting it to go was John Calgen. Puck goes up in the net. Yep, tipped up into the netting. We'll take a whistle. I really thought it was just going to be quiet this third period, but man, what a oh Luciani! Oh, oh man, look at the, the Michigan. Michigan! I really thought that went in from over here. Put his arms up to try and celebrate. I I don't know what it hit, but stayed out somehow. Now, Alex, 
Alex, I really do have a question for it. What, what, what do they call it, the Michigan? Do you actually know? Yes, so there was a player who used to play for the University of Michigan, the name is escaping me at the time, who was the originator of that move, I believe somewhere in the late 90s, it's Mike Legg, as I get the assist from my great director Calvin Keyes on that, pulled the move off in a regulation game and we hadn't seen it in a really long time. There was a viral video that came out also many years ago of a youngster doing it in a shootout on the Boston Bruins TD Garden ice. And then from there, as we started to get towards the middle parts of the 2010s, we saw it appear in NHL games, and now it's a worldwide phenomenon. So the Michigan, the lacrosse move, Andrei Shvetsnikov, the first player in NHL history to pull it off in a game. And since then, we've seen Trevor Zegras get it a couple of times. A little, little history fact there for all the fans. So. And the other stat check here from our great director Calvin Keyes, that move was during the NCAA Division I tournament against University of Minnesota in 1996, as that shot almost went in down low, and University of Michigan actually went on to win the national championship that year. So Mike Legg became a household name for Michigan fans and inspired a generation. Very interesting fact. I actually just never really knew about why they called it that. So learning new things every day, right? Yep. Goal comes from the place that it was pulled off and a shot from the point is kept out by Tallarico, regaining his feet. Bolin tried to get a pass couldn't hold on to it. Here's Zach Heinz. Also has two goals and a hard hit there into the boards. Here's Heinz through his legs. Plays it to Ruffin. Fanning on the shot. Now to Shields looking towards the front. Kept out by Rosek. Looking at this replay. Tie ends. Pushing that puck out, which made the clear a big hit by Babiak. Man. That is certainly going to leave a mark there. A couple bruises probably for tomorrow's game. Wow. Shields nice. puts oh. one on. A Yahtzee play there. The bounce straight down onto the ice was just barely scraping over the red goal line. Ketterman. Lost it at center ice, but had enough time to saucer one down low. Shields ropes it for Enns, who has some room. A backhander for Ruffin. Here's an now Zach Bridges. Chopped away momentarily, but he holds on. Quick stank handle move, breaks in. Lost it on the second try. And now Spodniak is up ice, goes one on one. Oh, if he would have handled that puck, that would have been a different story if he could get around that defender. Played back, now forward is Redding. He crosses over, and a sliding puck through the middle was taken away. Redding, I saw what he tried to see there. Luciani was cutting to the net, and he wanted to hit him on the back side of both those defenders, which a little more speed on it, he probably could have slipped it through, but fortunate for the Falcons there. Here's Tyler Rico, will stop it with the skates. And now Redding will find Luciani, played over to the right for Spodniak, looking towards the front on the backhand, drops it in the slot, nobody there to take the shot. Spodniak spinning off, gets his own pass as it bounced off of a body. In the slot is Redding. Trying to swipe it over was Luciani. He'll still hold on. Pressed hard into the boards by Ben Pizzamenti. Now all alone, what a move! And the hat trick for Matus Spodniak! Man, that was back forth, back forth, back forth there for a second. That was crazy. I, I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't even follow it. If there wasn't any protective netting, 
surrounding the ice surface. You'd see a lot of hats on the ice as the fans in Wow Cafe showing their gratitude. And a great play there. Back and forth, as you said. Luke Spodniak was down on one knee, figured out a way to make it go. And we talked about him in the pre-show. Player to watch for Adrian. And another great display of skill. Matu Spodniak gets it done once again. The Bulldogs lead 9-1 to one with 12-16 left to go in the third. Tenazaka picks up and puts one on. An easy pad save made by Tallarico. Great. Uh, sorry. I uh, just, Matu Spaniak, just phenomenal. Going to be in the record books on Adrian College for sure. I mean, beautiful season this year. And it doesn't get any better than that, honestly. Long pass sent up. Breaking out of their own zone. Dittmer has it. Comes in contact with Lovasek. Tries to break things up. Tenazaka with it. Just taken down by Kaljan. Pass muscled over for Calgin as he flips it through. Connor May, all alone, scores! And the floodgates have once again opened up for the Bulldogs. Double digits for the Bulldogs, 10 to one. Hard to believe at this point too that this is even a playoff game. Starting to see similarities from when Concordia was here the last time. Bulldogs winning 12-1. Beautiful pass up off the boards to Connor May. Throws it top shelf. Or a beautiful goal. And he gets on the board. Perfectly placed shot as things continue. Here's Babiak with a try of his own. Blocker to side. Good save by Rosek. Doing all that he can to keep his team in it. Trying to skate up the front was Humphreys. Easily taken away. Murphy. In the corner, this squeaks out. Nice play by Shields to knock it loose. Too many men on the ice. Officials didn't see it, but at this point, not really an affecting call. If you blow it down for the penalty, it is 10 to 1 at this point. Yeah, crowd needs to just settle down a little bit. It's 10 to one, game's pretty much, uh, I guess I won't say anything. Now we get a call with a tie up in front of the Falcon bench. Some pushing and shoving, both players. That Riley Murphy is one of them and losing the brain bucket is Petronak. Both are furious at one another, Murphy throws the helmet back into the Falcon bench, and I believe both of them will be escorted off. Yeah, Murphy going to the locker room, which. Yeah, now Petronak as well. And this is some of the frustration that we saw in the first series earlier this season really starting to show itself in full force and boil over. There you see Petronak leaving the ice for the duration of the game from what it seems. So there'll be a meeting of the minds in front of the scorer's box. The official will figure out what calls they decide to make. Both captains here, Ruffin and Number 13, it's Noah Reutemann getting the gist of what they were gonna call there. There you see, saw it earlier, the hat trick goal as the two Spodniak now leads the NCAA Division Three in scoring with 25 goals, 23 assists, 
48 points, I mean, it does not get any better than that. Yeah, I mean, Matus Svodniak, man, I just can't highlight him enough. Doesn't even do it justice. Watch, I mean, you can just watch him play, and he's just so quick with the puck. He's, he knows where everybody is at all times, it seems like, and that's why he's got both in the 20s for goals and assists, so. We'll take an out of town score check at the moment. There is another Adrian College hockey team that is playing tonight. As we see some of them return from Eastern Michigan, the ACHA men's division one team beat the Eastern Michigan University nine to nothing tonight. The women's ACHA division one team unfortunately lost five to two at the hands of rival Liberty University. And we'll check in on the women's varsity as a hard hit down low right in front of the glass as the Lady Varsity Bulldogs tied with St. Norbert. And some more interesting events and in arm up on the play. I believe we're gonna get a whistle here. Cross check and call will go against Colin Kirchhoff. <laughs> Kirchhoff and Ruffin have been going at it all night and now Kirchhoff is gonna be the one serving a penalty so Let's look at it here. Ruffin coming down the ice. Yep. Nothing to there's, there's that big hit from Babyak. But we'll take the face off on the far side in the offensive zone of the Bulldogs. They have two minutes of odd four on three play as there were matching penalties earlier. High, high emotions, obviously. The Falcons probably not too pleased down 10 to one, and that also causes issues, so. Official got in the way there of the zone entry for Babiak, so he couldn't cross over. Fans did not like that, understandably why. This is played through the slot, Babiak. Almost got one there. High ends, looking towards the front, Babiak again, couldn't get the tip. Seems like they're trying to get it to Babyak. Ruffin. There's Ruffin, will go backwards, get it to Babyak, and slice it over once again for Ruffin. A quick give and go, looking for the stuff. Babyak, can he get it? No, now it's to Shields, and back to Ruffin. Circling up top. Played over for Babyak. Some nice stick handling plays there. Shields. Wide to ends, played through and off the netting and will stop for a whistle. I really liked it though when Matus Vladnia came off the bench and the whole crowd right here next to the Adrian penalty box, he came in and everybody just started applauding him because obviously he stepped up and it's like, yeah, I'll just take that two minutes. Plays it up the boards as Luciani will get it on the left point. We'll go to five on four here as Spodniak and Gillishammer will exit the box. Redding kicks it to himself. Luciani to highlight two. A hundred NCAA collegiate games played as of the first game against St. Norbert last weekend. And as well, Ty Ends reached the 100 games played milestone in the second game against St. Norbert. So a big congratulations to the both of them. Penalty will expire. Spodniak will move it over. It's broken free. Rosak couldn't hold on. Tipped out of the air. Spodniak holds it on the blue now to Spencer. Winding it up and knocking the stick out of the hand was the shot from Spencer. Spodniak. 
Redding plays it rink wide. Good move from Heinz. Now up top for Spencer. A one-timer, Van Don couldn't get it to go. Rosek is without his goalie paddle. Gillishammer had his pass intercepted. Shoveled by Spencer. Now to Redding. It's all Bulldogs at the moment. Falcons can't get it out of their own zone. Luciani. Now over. Here's a shot on. Rosek has his stick back. He's able to keep it. And a miss pass played over the blue. Finally, Concordia able to get the change as Luciani will skate back gingerly. Looked like he was trying to fake out Gillishammer. Here's Calgin, moves in, and Adrian College is offsides. And we'll take a pause with 6.11 left to go in the Ladies third period. There you see Jaden Shields, a good night for him. Three assists. Not a bad way to play a hockey game. Reutemann lifts it down low as a Dinier will play it with the backhand. Io Dinier. Now over for Connor May. Took a tumble. Got to be careful. Ice is slippery. Kershaw moves a pass up for Pizzamenti. Kudo able to move it in down low. Things a little bit more passive in the late stages of the game. Saw some contact before, but things have really quieted down since then. Yeah, and I mean, motions are high. I think everything's starting to slow down a little bit. Obviously, Adrian scoring a few goals here in this third period now, but I think they're kind of just coasting to victory. Just about five minutes left in the third period of the first game in this weekend series. Now it is interesting to note the opening quarterfinal playoff series is a two game weekend and it is not the first two two wins, rather it's the first two three points. So if you win in regulation, that's two points, you lose it's zero. If you tie, it's one point, and an overtime win is then counted at a second. If for some reason these two teams tie both games and after the second game the point total is two to two, we play a 20 minute mini game after the second game tomorrow and it will be played like a normal period and the winner of the period will win the game as Suede breaks through, Summers had a nice stick handle play, went up and over. And Summers fanned on the open net. Had plenty of real estate to work with. Bolin moves up the middle as Klein will wrap it around. Now Heinz there. It's intercepted. Played through the gut, here's Zach Heinz. A backhand to ends, puts it on, and a save by Rosek. Let's highlight a little bit on the men's ACHA D1 team, though. I mean, they are cooking as they beat Eastern Michigan, what, yesterday I think 16-1, and then tonight I think they beat them 8 or 9 to nothing. Yeah. So. Both, a lot of hot women's team also this year is flourishing as well, obviously playing St. Norbert right now and over in Green Bay, or sorry, not Green Bay, over in Wisconsin. They were at Lambeau Field the other day. Uh, if you guys follow the women's hockey team on Instagram. 
or any social media platform rather, you know, Twitter, on Facebook. Um, a lot of hockey teams flourishing here at Adrian College. Got to expect the best if you're a Bulldog. Got to represent the black, white, and gold as ends will get it in the slot and send this over for Shields. Put it up top and the puck touches off the 2021-22 NCHA playoff champion. The banner sitting up top from Air the beautiful Harrington Ice Arena on Adrian College campus. Three oh one left to go in the third period. Alex Herman and Brett Carlisle here on ACTV. So happy to have everybody join us tonight. Things really starting to wind down. And we'll get a scoring update now for the women's varsity team as they are leading over St. Norbert one to nothing from the looks of it. They're still in the second period. We wish them luck. Big weekend for them as they near playoff time as well. Two spotty, it's gonna get a penalty here. Yeah. Not a call that you wanna take with such little time left. But he'll, he'll skate off to the box here. Having some discussion in front of the box. Yeah, and I I know Paul Rigby is very 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 good referee. I mean, he just Matus Spadniak also just a great guy. I mean, he just wanted a little explanation of what he did there, and obviously and wasn't upset that he got called for it because I think he actually kind of knew what happened there. So this is cleared out of the zone. Here's the approach for the Falcons. Moved up from Bridges. Now controlling is Redding. A long pass, potentially a breakaway. Luciani stops, pulls up, what a move, and he scores! Oh baby, what a beauty! <laughs> oh, Leslie Luciani and caught cherry picking. Giving the Falcons a taste of their own medicine. Streaking all alone, Cameron puts on the brakes. Er, look at that, upstairs. Camera couldn't even focus. That's how fast we He's had to move fast. it down the ice. He's too fast. Moving at the speed of sound, speed of light, whatever you may call it. Luciani with the goal, it's 11 to one Bulldogs. Short-handed goal in the late stages of the third. A extended 10-goal lead as Connor May plays that off of his back. Some skill there. Almost broke free. Adinier pulls up. Slaps it around down low. The crowd applause for the captain, Alessio Luciani. Reutemann has it in center. Played up top to the blue. Cycled down low. Still 25 seconds left to go on the power play. Tallarico fought off that shot. Easy chest save for him. Babiak looking to intervene. And now stepping up is Mason Ausmus. Moves around is crunched by Dinier. 25 seconds left to go. Spodniak out of the box. Oh, and Babiak was looking all alone for a breakaway of his own. Almost had the two on O. Swade, 10 seconds left to go. Played it over the blue. On sides, a last second chance potentially. That shot was blocked. Lifted up top. 
and the final seconds will tick off. And the Bulldogs skate away, and not without some extracurriculars, as Malik and Shields exchange some pushes and shoves in game number one of the quarterfinal NCHA round goes to the Bulldogs by a score of 11 to one. Saw a lot of great hockey, Brett. Uh, an unbelievable first period. Six goals to start the frame. And not much more that you can say after that. It was a total Bulldog domination from that point out. And I, I mean, it, it kind of expected it to happen. I mean, uh, Concordia is a very young team, very young team. I mean, mostly all freshmen. They have a couple juniors on their team, three of them to be exact. And, you know, that's just the Bulldogs are been skillful for a long time. They, Matus Spodniak is unstoppable today with his hat trick. I mean, honestly, it's just it's textbook for the Bulldogs right now. But once again, to the latter play of the playoffs in this hawk in the Harris Cup finals. Aurora's there, St. Norbert's there, so I mean even Trine's there as well. You just never know what's gonna happen, but right now St. Norbert and Aurora are looking very good as they did take a couple, they took one of them, uh, St. Norbert took one from the Bulldogs, Trine also took one from the Bulldogs, so. And with that, Alex Herman and Brett Carlisle here on ACTV. Game number one goes to the Bulldogs. We'll see round number two tomorrow afternoon right here at Arrington Ice Arena at three o'clock. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you so much for tuning in on ACTV and can't wait to see you tomorrow afternoon. It's round number two of the quarterfinal in the NCHA playoffs, Concordia University of Wisconsin and Adrian College. April 6, 2021, I was sitting in my office and an email popped into my inbox from someone in your graduating class today. The email said, Dear President Docky, back in August I had emailed you in regards to the state of the well-being of the campus community during the COVID spike. At that time, I was incredibly anxious about the prospect of spending my senior year of college sitting at my kitchen table in my hometown trying to finish my seminar projects in the event we switched to all online learning. As I type this email now in April, I cannot describe to you the gratitude that my fellow students and I have for Adrian remaining open on campus for the duration of the school year. I wanted to take the time to thank the Adrian College community, the faculty, the staff, for allowing us to have as normal of a year as possible in a world that simply did not want that to happen. I look forward to walking across the stage in May knowing that I was still able to enjoy time with my friends and the Bulldog community during my senior year. All the best, Max Birmingham. Class of 2021. Max, you've got to stand up so we can give you a round of applause.
For those of us on this stage, today is one of the most exciting days of the year. We love to see the wonder and anticipation in the eyes of our new students as all of you anxiously await all of the amazing experiences that will define the years ahead.